like you were having fun. The driver seemed a bit cross. But yes, something else ticked off the bucket list. shopping basket. At least I hope it is. Just for companionship? Well, Elsie uses hers for casual sex, but I'd just like someone to help me walk the dog. You haven't got a dog. Well, no, but I put one on my profile. I thought it made me sound warmer. <laughs> I called him Humphrey. So, you're using an imaginary dog named after my fiancé to lure men back to the cottage? Yes, dear. Hello. Very convincing. Playing the part of a detective. Ah, yes, I see what you mean. <laughs> I'm sure you were amazing. Ooh. Are you okay, Anne? Huh? Mm -hmm. She's shopping. Oh no. He's got a lazy eye. I never know if he's paying attention. Thank <laughs> you. 
wear your uh, clothes. This heat is interminable. I need a glass of water.
I think she moved here from Exeter about five or six years ago. Our gold. Noah Culpepper, bit of a geek, but harmless. Divorced. His wife, Janet, ran off with his best mate, Sally. And were they all friends with Paul Yellen, our victim? No, that's the thing, see, none of us were. He only just joined us a few days earlier. I think he just bought a house here. So he's not local? No, I'm pretty sure he said he was from Hastings. I mean, that's why he was our victim. It's a tradition. The newest member always gets to play the murder victim. Yes, unfortunately, in this case, quite literally. And when was this exactly, Polly? Last night, after dark. Ten, maybe? How's your mother? Oh, she's good, thanks. She's still cleaning up at the school? Ah, uh, not anymore, no. She got a job at the card shop. And you say this man was standing across the road? Across the road, but looking this way. She's still with that waste of space with the motorbike. Give me my dad. Yep, she's still with him. Um, but he hasn't got a bike anymore. He's got a high and dive. Never liked him. He was a foot tapper. Never trust a man who taps his foot when you're talking to him. Right, so he was across the road by looking at me. I didn't say he was looking at me. I said he was looking over this way. But he was up to no good. You could tell. How long would you say he was there? A woman. Over an hour. He only left because some woman caught him nosing about. Gave him a right telling off. Which woman? No idea. Like I said, it was dark. Could you describe either of them? He was medium height. Had a woolly hat on. She were medium height. No hat. There's not much more we can achieve till the lab's open in the morning, but um, uh, let's talk to Hastings Police so they can tell us about the victim. Right. So... Got anything exciting planned for this evening? Ooh, beans on toast, bath, then help Zoe with her CV. Is she looking for a job? <laughs> well, I'm doing most of the looking, if I'm honest. She's a good kid, but like every other 16-year-old, she's just on her phone all day. Honestly, I wanted to get out and meet people. Yes, the curse of the World Wide Web. Now, I've got a similar problem with Martha's mum. She's looking for love online. Mm. I think the plan tonight to talk her out of it. You're not talking me out of it. Even after all the things Humphreys just told you, he made them up. He didn't. A woman who just happened to be my age, living in Devon, agrees to meet a stranger in a pub only to discover an axe hidden under his coat which he sees poking out when he goes to the bathroom. Too much. Too much. Besides which, I've already got a match. What? His name's Oliver, he's 63. He has his own hair teeth and house and we're having dinner tomorrow evening tomorrow he's coming here what he wants to sample my tajine i bet he does and what if he wants to meet humphrey why would he want to meet humphrey your imaginary dog you have an imaginary dog i'll say he's at the vet look i know you're worried about me Morty, and that's very sweet but you can't expect me to be on my own for the time i got left well, you've got us You've got your own lives to live. What if you move away? We won't. You might. And then what would I do? Leave here and move in with you? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, we'd love you to. Uh, if we did. Go. I mean, somewhere. But we're not. But if we did. So, so, so when I say no, I actually mean yeah, yes. If we did. But we're not. Which is why I know. We just want you to be happy. <laughs> Because having Oliver here for dinner tomorrow evening will make me very happy indeed. I suppose I shouldn't worry. After all, I don't know what she got up to when we were in London. Well, exactly. I'm sure Oliver is a thoroughly decent chap. Yes. 
And if he's not, we can murder him and dump his body in the river. Yes, agreed. Did Paul Yellen seem 
look different to you than the day before? I didn't really talk to him. I mean, I tried to help everyone, you know, with a bit of direction here and there, but I had no call to do so with him. He was just the body. Quite. I saw him talking to George, though. Did you uh, hear what they were talking about? Argyle. Turns out we were both supporters. Enough playing there. It belongs on a shelf. I'd met him a few days ago in Kitty J's. He said he was new to the area. So I suggested he come to the players. Get to know people. Only we didn't have to worry about lines or anything. Because as a new boy, he'd just be a dead body. Turns out I was right. That's odd. Who's Nick? The most miserable man in the world working in the toy shop. No, Paul Yellen supporting Plymouth Argar when he lived in Hastings. Who's next? Um, Vivian Mishfield. So you arranged all the costumes? Well, the players have their own stock of costumes, but they're all a bit old, so I just do running repairs. My mum was a seamstress. <laughs> Something to remember about amateur dramatics. Never let on you have a particular skill. <laughs> Your husband, Harry, is the train driver? A case in point. Um, at drinks one evening, he happened to mention that he drove a steam train. Well, Margaret was on him like a shot. Yes, uh, right. Uh, so, so there was nothing about Paul Yellen at the dress rehearsal that um, struck you as being unusual in any way? Uh, no, but uh, I didn't really know him well enough to notice even if there was. Right. Not one of the neighbours saw or heard this mystery bloke or the woman that chased him off. But he's probably just a figment of Polly Deacon's imagination. Margot, hmm? uh, what have we got on the deceased? If he lived in Hastings, he must have been living in a cave somewhere. He's not on the voting register, council records, HMRC, or any other official list. I mean, there's nothing on the PNC either, nor social media. I'm going back to see Polly. Didn't you say he just bought a house in Shifton Abbott? Uh, maybe talk to the sisters who did the conveyancing? Right, yeah. Oh, and the engine driver said something about debris on the line which made the train slow down. Maybe check out what that was, it might be significant. The problem is, the why can sometimes lead you to finding a who, and then eventually a how, or a how can sometimes point you to a who, and then a why. But we haven't got a why. I'm not even sure if we've got a how. The autopsy said the knife pierced the lung. But where was the blood around the body? What are we missing? Everything by the sound of it. We've had the press outside all morning. HQ think we might need to do a press conference. A public appeal might be an option if we can't find out more about Paul Yellen. True. Did we check his home? Yeah, we sent a team there. The house was empty. They got in and did a quick search. Nothing of note found. Then maybe we should take another look. Come along, Sergeant. and a new credit card. Nothing upstairs, but it's clear only one bedroom's being used. Yes, town is pretty much the same. Ready meals? For one. One mug, one plate, everything's pretty basic. No family photos, nothing personal at all, as far as I can see. Seems he had a very lonely life.
thinking what I'm thinking. Not sure what you're thinking. That whoever was watching from across the street wasn't watching Polly. He was watching Paul Yannick. She's just about to say that. Previous owner, a Mrs. Uh, Sarah Scarcroft, who left everything to Yellen and her will. Uh, find out what Paul Yellen was to her, please, Margot. Uh, Kelby, what do we know about the man who was watching the house? Uh, sir, uh, medium height, uh, wearing a woolly hat. It's not much. What about the woman he was seen with? Same, without the hat. Shipped another police station. Just a second. Chief Superintendent.
as your nan says, every pot has a lid. After all, look at you two. Stop. 
It happened in High Broughton, a village just outside Exeter. One of the worst injured was an 11-year-old boy, Christopher Bishfield. Bishfield? There were pictures of Vivian and Harry with a young boy at the house. Vivian and Harry moved here from Exeter. So Vivian and Harry Bishfield would have been there when Aiden Scarcroft turned up with George to join the players. <laughs>
You were not said it was suicide. Just another troubled teenager not coping. Mm. <laughs> he killed my son. Just as sure as we didn't die that morning. I killed him the moment he came out of the pub and got behind that wheel. So yes. Sorry for what I did. I can't. I'm not asking anything of you. To be honest, I, I can't imagine the pain, the torment you and your family have gone through. Okay, let, let's take a break there. Um, I'm sure you and your lawyer will want to discuss what's been said here. I just have one more question. When you entered the buffet car and you saw Mr. Scarcroft standing at the food table, could you think of any reason we didn't find any blood there? Was there something on the floor you disposed of or, or something else? We weren't standing. Sorry. When I went into the buffet car, he was laying down on the floor. Is that? Not very. We know the cause of death was the knife puncturing his lung, and we know who stabbed him and why, but something just doesn't add up. We've got the full post mortem back. Nothing surprising there. Though there's a marker in the toxicology report. I haven't had a chance to look it up yet. Look up what? There were traces of a substance called Curare in his blood. Curare? I know that from somewhere. Let's see. I think that's right. Curare! Of course! There are only two possible reasons for there to be so little blood found at the scene of a stabbing so serious. If the body was killed elsewhere and moved. And the second one? If the victim is already dead. Dead bodies don't bleed. Yes. This plaster found on his hand. Did it happen on the train? Yeah. We were doing fittings. Vivian. Stops the breathing. I think Aiden Scarcroft was already dead when Harry stabbed him. I knew Harry was planning on killing him. I didn't know how or when. But I knew he'd do it. You found him outside Aiden's house, didn't you? I knew I couldn't stop him, but I knew he'd get caught. 
This is simple man. You killed Aidan Scarcroft to stop your husband from doing so. I couldn't think of any other way. He's had so much pain in his life. He's a good man. I couldn't see him in prison. How could I? Yet you'd risk the same thing for yourself. I don't have a life. Not anymore. My life ended the day I buried my baby boy. All everyone tells you, just take it a day at a time. So that's what I do. Go through the motions. We have to switch off, you see, because every morning when you wake up, the pain just comes back. Yes, and uh, who they deem responsible for Aiden Scarcroft's death. I'll tell the Chief Super the good news. Now, obviously, my driving exam. 
next month. I do. And what is it that you do? There's a young man here. 